concludes the first technical session of the day on processing and production of minor forest produce. We have with us Dr. Shankar Chandra Deka, sir, Professor, Department of Food Engineering and Technology, Tezpur University, Assam, as session chair for special address on the global and Indian scenario of minor forest produce with special reference to honey, mahua, tamarind, and adipanit. Before starting the session, I would like to introduce Dr. Shankar Chandra Deka, sir, to you all. Sir has obtained his doctoral degree in biochemistry from CCS Haryana Agricultural University. He is having around 32 years of experience in teaching and research field. His research works have been published as papers in more than 116 peer six popular articles, 25 book chapters, and more than for his outstanding research work. He is a life member of Association of Food Scientists and Technologists and life member of Assam Science Society. Sir is currently working as a professor, Department of Food Engineering and Technology, Tezpur University, Assam. We welcome you to this webinar, sir. The session is over to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good morning to everyone. Uh, first of all, I am very much thankful to the organizers who has given me this opportunity for this today's session share and also a special address on global and Indian scenario of minor forest produce with special reference to mushroom, honey, mohua, erekanat, and tamarind. I am very much uh, happy that there are a lot of very renowned speakers in this particular session and they are also going to speak on mushroom, honey, mohua, erekanat, and tamarind. And, uh, this is one of the most important uh, areas in our uh, tribal areas, particularly, or in our rural areas. So I will be, uh, because of some technical faults, I'm, uh, I tender uh, apology for that. And I will be trying to complete my presentation within the stipulated time, which has been give, allotted to me. And uh, first of all, uh, Uh, these are my contents uh, where I'm trying to show the different parts or the, or the entire presentation in different parts. And uh, uh, say, for example, the introduction part, the minor forest produce history, MFP classification of the current scenario. There are successful processing of MFP, minor forest in the uh, fruits in the forest or minimum support price or mechanism for marketing. Then there are a lot of important items. Uh, even the schemes available, then some of the objectives of TRIFED also I'm trying to show. Then there are different items which has been given to me, for example, mushroom, honey, mohua, erekana, tamarind. So all these things I will try to uh, discuss in a very quick way so that uh, I'm not going beyond my time limit allotted. First of all, I would like to say what is actually the, uh, the on the forest. In our country, forest is a large treasure house of huge wealth of natural resources. And forest in India are primarily treated as a social and environmental resources. These beginning slides may be very helpful to the people who are very new actually. And uh, there are secondarily or commercial resources also. And more than 300 million people are deriving full or partial livelihood from our forest. So forest produce can be divided into three different types timber, non-timber, or the minor minerals. And now, what do we understand by minor forest produce? So this particular definition may be very important. Minor forest produce means all the non-timber forest produce of plant origin. They will include bamboo, cans, other, for example, leaves, gums, waxes, dyes, resins, and many forms of food, including nuts, maybe wild fruits, honey, lac, pasture, etc., etc. So all these items are included in the minor forest produce. And the minor forest producers, they provide both subsistence and cash income to our tribal people, mostly in our rural areas. And they form a major portion of their food, fruits and medicines and other consumption items and also provide cash income through sale. Our government of India has notified that till now 50 items in the list of minor forest produce. And the information was provided by the Indian Minister of State or tribal affairs during or during a parliament a parliament discussion. Uh, this particular uh, minor forest produce, uh, they are actually the word minor 
uh, is used sexually, uh, it doesn't mean that it is very minor, but it has a major source of livelihood, what I want to say, particularly for our tribal people, because they are very poor people compared to some of the other people who are in the, uh, living in the uh, city or town areas. So we must, we must give high emphasis on this particular area. The civil tribe and the other the traditional forest dwellers uh, which is recognition of forest right act 2006 it defines a minor forest produce as all non timber forest produce of plant origin and it includes as i have mentioned all these things are included in this the minor forest produce has significant economic and social value for the forest dwellers and in an estimated uh, it has been observed statistics that 100 million people they derive their source of livelihood from this mfp or minor forest produce and uh, from the collection of marketing of minor forest produce, the, uh, it has given a new livelihood to our rural people. And it is very, very important for them for food or for shelter or for medicines and even for cash incomes besides providing the critical substances, which I have already mentioned. Now, these tribal people, they derive 20 to 40 percent of their annual income from this MFP or the minor forest produce. Now, this particular uh, MFP, they has potential to create about 10 million work days annually in our country. Uh, if you see the history, uh, the uh, global scenarios, the ancient Egyptians, they imported the Gam Arabic, which is a very, very important commercial project nowadays from Sudan. Then they traded sandalwood oil from uh, way back in 12th centuries. Then there was exports of essential oil from Philippines, etc., 1864, way back. Then Brazil, not stayed by Dutch traders during 18th century. So these are some of the history, and it says that it is very, very old. These particular minor forests were very old among our, among our human community. Now, as you see, the MFP classification, edible plant products or the tan eel plants or the berry wrapper leaves, for example, the edible plant products are spices and condiments or the medicinal plants, or aromatic plants, fatty oil, plants, gum and resin, exuding plants, these are all coming under the edible plant products. And if you look into the tan eel plants, dyes and coloring plants, fiber and floss eel plants, bamboo cans, fuel wood, charcoal marking, they are all coming under the tan eel plants. And in the berry wrapper leaves, other leaves for plates, beads for ornaments, saponin and marking, nuts, plants and others, these are all coming under berry wrapper leaves. Now in the group two, the MFP of the animal origin, the honey, then lab, and then the pusher and other silk, then insects and animal hides, skins and feathers, horns, bones, the select ivory and musk. These are all the uh, minor forest produce of animal origins. Now these uh, uh, NTFP, they have been classified, for example, the food products uh, into various categories like uh, food products, spices and condiments, still plant oils, plant gums, natural pigments, oleoresins, and these are the various products, for example, which I have shown in my guidance. For example, in the food products, nuts, fruits, edible fungi, vegetables, starches, oils, maple sugar, under spices or condiments, nutmeg or mash, cinnamon, and cassia, cardamom, then the galanga, karaoke, all these things are coming up. So there are different uh, classifications actually is given by the NTF. In the fiber flosses, uh, we get different types of fibers or different types of flosses. Even in the vegetables and canning materials, also we get different types. Latex also one of them. Insect products are one of them. Insect foods, like sandalwoods, kharu, these are also different examples. Then essential oils, then other plant insecticides we get like Paritram, Deris, Medang, and there are a lot of examples. And the medicinal plants also of, uh, things like wild plants and the under animals or animal products also a lot of examples. There are a lot of miscellaneous products also, which I have mentioned one or two uh, just in my previous slides, like berry leaves or the soap berries. These are some of the examples. Now, now this uh, current scenario, about 100 million people in our country, as on today, they live uh, in India and uh, 
out of this around uh, in, in an around forest uh, about 100 million people are living and they get uh, a part of their livelihood from this mft and about 70 million of these people are tribal people and they are mostly the forest dwellers and one of the most important things to be noticed here is the women are the main gatherers and earners from this minor forest produce and family is the basic unit around which the social uh, social organization of the tribal society takes its form. So uh, we, we, we feel that uh, this particular area is very important because these tribal people who are having their main livelihood from this particular source only. And this particular, uh, if you see the uh, some of the enabling environment for successful NTFP processing, uh, uh, first of all, we get the raw materials which are processed, then we get various products, then these are distributed, and then finally gone into the market. So these are these are actually a lot of uh, important processes are there. Value additions are important steps in this particular uh, minor forest producing. So we need to have the industry should come forward or our uh, academia also should come forward to have the processing in order to have the high value addition of this product so that the uh, benefit of these high value added products are actually harvested or reaped by the tribal or the people who actually need it. Uh, these are some of the actually uh, minor forests of the forest, uh, minor fruits of the forest. So uh, I, I, if I get time, I may discuss in later uh, in discussion. Then, the, as I have been asked that today, I uh, should also focus mostly on the mushroom or the honey or the mohua food or the erythema or the tamarind. We can we can uh, uh, the, the, the say that this mushroom is one of the most important agricultural uh, harvest in the entire country, not only in the entire country, in the entire world. And it has very high value, very high value. Today, mushroom is uh, preferred by many of the elite people, uh, not only in the town or high tech cities, even our rural areas. And in our rural areas, more importantly, this mushroom is a very, very important product because it has very high amount of protein contents. Similarly, the honey, honey is a highly demanding raw material uh, product because the honey demand in the entire world, not only in our country or rural areas or town areas or city areas or in the entire country, even in the world as a whole, the demand of honey is very, very high. Similarly, the mohua fruit, this fruit is uh, uh, very highly available in the eastern part of the country. Of course, in other parts of the country also it is available. And uh, nowadays people are preferring to prepare even the wine from this fruit and then the arecanite is not only in the entire rail areas or in the uh, uh, people nowadays are trying to process this arecanite and trying to develop a lot of dyes and trying to export this. So a lot of value additions are highly possible. Of course, many people are trying to do it and already being successful. Similarly, the tamarind is also having very high value. And this tamarind is extremely, extremely useful and they are having lots and lots of medicinal properties. What I want to say that uh, the mushroom or the honey or the mahua or the erythema or the tamarind, they are almost available in almost all the parts of the country. And people uh, who are actually living in the rural areas, they not only get the raw materials, but what do we, uh, they, they, on, they only get the raw materials, but what we need to give to them as an industry or the uh, academia, we need to give the high high value addition of these raw materials. Then only the benefit by these people they can get at the highest level. Otherwise, their income, their uh, their economic benefit will be not to that extent what actually the other people are actually getting. So that should be our motto or that should be our target. So if we do that, that means the high value addition. If we do that then we can, we can give more and more benefit to our tribal people. And as a result, that economic benefit, economic, uh, I mean, the upliftment will also be very, very high. That should be, that should be looked into by our, uh, the different industry people and the academia people. Now, uh, in support of the minimum support price, uh, which I will not harp on this because minimum support price is also a very, very important point. Because if we are not uh, 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 very uh, 
stringent on this, then the actual price to be uh, received by this particular liability will, will be very, very less. So we have to be very, very uh, stringent on this particular point also. So uh, already the government has given some of the MSP for the MFP and accordingly we must, uh, we must actually follow this one. Uh, there are a lot of mechanisms also how we can do the marketing of the minor forest produce in my subsequent discussions i'm going to share this session so i may start up on this point so otherwise uh, time may be a constant uh, factor or uh, the, for this particular point of time so otherwise uh, the marketing part is also very very crucial and critical uh, very recently very recently uh, very recently, uh, some of the MFP items have been included in the MSP scheme. Uh, these are the examples. I will share the slides with you later on, and I will be giving you how these particular MFP items they have been included in the MSP scheme. Some of the uh, items from the, for example, Jharkhand or in the All India level or Northeast or in the Urissa, uh, even from Karnataka also, these are actually included and given the and included under MSP scheme. Uh, these are some of the very important uh, uh, items which are also included in the MSP and uh, which I have mentioned some of the other plants which are also included in the MFP items and they are also covered under the MSP scheme. Now, what, what, what we must uh, uh, time and again or reassert that these particular uh, materials which are actually available in our rural areas or in the tribal areas or in forest areas, we must try to add value addition or we must try to increase the processing of these materials so that we can have more and more benefit in terms of the economic power which we can give to our tribal people or the rural people. So this is one example, uh, pictorial example, or uh, which I am trying to show that, yes, we can do that. There are, of course, some of the challenges and there are some issues. The forestry sector has significant uh, uh, potential to enhance the income of the forest dependent communities, including tribal people, to sustainable harvesting, processing, value addition, and marketing of the minor forest produce. And at the present, however, the sector has few concerns causing social and ecological stress, and some of these challenges and issues are follows, like unsustainable techniques of harvesting minor forest produce is leading to poor resource regeneration. There is a lack of standardization of the quality of MFP, the value addition, value chain from collection to the sale of the produce is largely unorganized and informal leading. Uh, to inequitable distribution of the profits, the MFP gatherers lack of the knowledge of value addition techniques and skills, poor awareness and lack of capacity of the local communities. So these are some of the very important challenges because these people who are actually collecting material, they are not able to all these things. We need to educate them. We need to uh, give this particular education to these people. Yes, you can get more and more price. If you can learn this skill, if you can uh, learn this particular processing, simple processing skill or other processing skills, then you can make more value addition, then you can get more money. These all things, our duty, we need to teach them. Then only they will get more money. Otherwise, they will not get more money. And their economic condition will be remaining as such as it was before. So this is our duty. So there are a lot of schemes also. There are centrally sponsored schemes and there are different, uh, uh, our, uh, under the PMFME scheme also, government has given enough and enough importance on this particular MFPs. So uh, the, really, I'm very much thankful to the policymakers of government, um, who is actually our Ministry of Food Processing Industries, who is really giving high importance on this particular area. Another uh, uh, sector is the Trifed, who is also giving high importance uh, on this minor forest produce. Already, of course, they are working a lot of, uh, what are, I mean, this uh, forest produce, they are already working Trifed, but in the, still they are giving high importance 
in northeast also they are giving in the eastern they are also giving and in the other tribal areas they are giving high importance there are of course there are different objectives uh, if i get the opportunity then i will be discussing separately uh, uh the value addition to minor forest produce this is what i want to say is a gateway to the economic empowerment of the tribal people I have already mentioned in my earlier one or two slides that the value addition is the only way to give more and more power, economic power to our tribal people. Otherwise, we will not be able to give more economic power to these needy people because their entire uh, livelihood is depending on this particular produce. We must help them. We must come forward. Uh, in the national forest policy also 1988 they are also giving a lot of importance on these particular materials or this forest produce uh, these are some of the pictures uh, which we have collected uh, there are a lot of uh, tribal people who are actually uh, doing the whole uh, i mean the uh, basic works but they are not actually getting the benefit now, uh, if you see the electric collection, first is the forest department. Then, from the forest department, it is coming to the tribal society. Then, uh, this is also connected to the permit, which is given from the collectors. Then comes the agents, then comes the sub agents, then comes the tribal collectors. Means people from, uh, people from by whom they are collecting the material from these tribal people. So, these all things are uh, in the same process. But the important point uh, at the same time is that how we can give the more and more value addition. Value addition, if we cannot do, then the benefit will not be high. Uh, these issues I have already mentioned, some of the issues of the MFP management. Uh, these are the, some of the very important products I have mentioned already, that is mushroom or the honey. Say, for example, mushroom, the total mushroom production in India is approximately 0.13 million tons. Price is 80 per kg. It is 80 per kg. It may be in our uh, producing areas. But if we bring it to value addition or to the town or the other areas, it will be 200 or 200 rupees plus. Similarly, the honey. So we need to have more value addition. If we have more value addition, the price will be very high. So as uh, our uh, uh, Honorable Professor uh, Loganathan mentioned, also Vice Chancellor Sir also mentioned, uh, Professor Indiresh, that value addition is more important. If we can make the value addition secondary or tertiary, then definitely we can increase the uh, more high uh, value of the product. And accordingly, if we get more value or high value added product, the price will be very, very high. Honey is also uh, almost uh, 133,200 metric tons of honey as per the 21-22 statistics are produced in our country and India one of the world's top honey exporters and we are exporting also huge amount of honey and uh, in the uh, can we can we can we make more and more money if we have more value addition we can make more and more money so India India has a big opportunity to earn more money from honey or from mushroom similarly also Similarly, the uh, international trade we can enhance more and more. We can uh, many of our uh, I mean mushrooms are sent to the different uh, countries, and India is already exporting 18.82 million US dollars uh, uh, in 2019. Uh, also, uh, top exporting partners of India is Germany, USA, France, Switzerland, Thailand, and we are getting very huge market for mushroom export. Similarly, for honey also, we are getting very high use markets. These are some of the examples. I will be sharing my slides with my friends later on, and then you will be getting all the information. But we must remember that there are a lot of, uh, I mean, export potential of this honey. And these are having a lot of medicinal. Similarly, the mohua is a very, very important forest produce, particularly in the North Indian plains and forests, in the Nepal, in Myanmar, in Sri Lanka also. There are very huge amount of Mohua productions are there and uh, the fats, it has a high amount of fats that can be used for manufacturing soap or detergent and the cakes are also used for the cattle feeds and other materials 
and the flowers are fermented to produce the alcoholic drink, which I mentioned at my very beginning. The very, very demanding product uh, at the national and the international level. Similarly, the Arica nuts, uh, I have mentioned, particularly in the Kerala or the southern country of our southern part of our country and the northeast or the eastern part of our country having high amount of Arica nut production. And from the Arica nut, we are having very huge export potential. And we can make lots and lots of evaluated product from this particular Arica nut. And this Heluated products can give huge return to our growers. So this is a, one of the most, I mean, the uh, 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 highly demanding area in today's context. Similarly, tamarind uh, is very, uh, tamarind is very, very important. I have already mentioned that it has a lot of medicinal properties. And these medicinal properties, and um, in our rural areas, the people, the folk, they are using as a folk medicine. And this folk medicine is very, very important because tribal people, they immediately rely on the folk medicine. And uh, as I mentioned, it has a lot of antimicrobial or anti-inflammatory, anti immunomodulatory properties are also there. So all these properties are uh, very, very important. And because of having all these properties, it is used as a folk medicine and it is having high, high value in our national or at the international level. But what we can do if we bring more value addition then our actual growers will get more and more benefit. Uh, this is in nutshell that they are, the, what are the different, uh, uh, how much the 50% uh, of income for 20 to 30% of rural people, uh, they are actually getting from this MFP 20, 220 million tons of fuel, food, 250 million tons of grass and green fodder per year. So these are some of the statistics which we can look into. And then the, we have, uh, if we look into as a whole, the MFP common market signal, these are the different areas uh, whereby you can look into how the collectors uh, from this, uh, actually, it goes through direct procurement by traders, then come to local market, then wholesale market, the same process. So these are the common market signals. So these market signals are followed in most of the parts of our country. Uh, this I have already mentioned that in our really our livelihood were very very simple people. They are very straightforward people. They don't know the I mean the, uh, the different uh, other skills and other techniques. They are not very sound on that. But they know how to grow. But the benefit is actually not high. But can we make can we have focus on this? This is our this should be our focus. Uh, these are some of the constraints which I have already mentioned. The unsustainable harvesting, old production technologies, transportation, taxating, and uh, lower prices, the commercializations, the non available good market, non proper research. This is very important non proper research on market and development. If we have a good research, particularly on value addition, then only, then only we can have more uh, benefit to these people. This should be our main target. Then the uh, COVID-19 pandemic affected our most of our minor forest produce. This is uh, the as it is giving massive job uh, in this minor forest, but we are people are losing uh, the jobs, which we should look into again. Then they are unable to buy seeds and fertilizers for the next uh, crop season. Then the government have allowed collection of the minor forest produce, but nationwide lockdown has cast a shadow on the tree. Uh, trade of minor forest produce, lack of storage and cash reserves for small village shop owners, a lacking system, preliminary stages of various schemes. I feel very, I mean, the, sorry that the, because of this particular COVID-19 hour, these tribal people are facing huge or massive problems in terms of their even uh, livelihood also. So can we again uh, make it more stronger uh, so that they get the actual benefit? We, we, we are the academicians and the industry people should really look into on this particular matter. So in conclusion, the important role of the minor forest produce in rural livelihoods, it recognized the significant opportunities for uh, significant opportunity for achieving both conservation and poverty education objectives by supporting the sustainable development of the minor forest produce. Uh, as I have already mentioned in my mushroom or the mohua or the erikana or the tamarind, 
or the even honey. So these are some of the areas. It's not that only these five or six, I mean, there are lots and lots of items. We can look into them. Then the rural people's doing minor forest produce value addition. While this process, those minor uh, forest produce quality will improve simultaneously, rural livelihood will also improve. But they should know and rectify the negative impact on the environment. Then develop and support the integrated efforts to achieve food security, increase the cash income, and conserve the forest through MFP related interventions. So these are possible only when we do the LVDs. So thank you very much uh, again to the organizers for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I'll be, of course, uh, available to you. I'll be sharing my uh, email, even my number also. If you have any point to discuss, you can share with me at any point of time. Thank you again. Thank you very much to organizers. Thank you so much, sir, for such an informative session. We will proceed to the next technical talk, which is on handling and storage practice of minor forest produce. For this session, we have with us Dr. Sandeep Mutt, Principal Scientist, Transfer of Technology Division, CIPET Ludhiana. Sir is currently serving as a Principal Scientist at ICAR CIPET Ludhiana. Sir is having around 22 years of experience in the National Agriculture Research System in the field of food production processes, mechanization, and value addition. Sir served as assistant and associate professor in the Faculty of Agriculture. Has more than 15 publications, including research papers, technical books, book chapters, and popular articles. We welcome you, sir, to this webinar. So, good morning to all, and I thank uh, NIFTEM for uh, giving me the opportunity to interact with the uh, participant and organizing such a relevant uh, webinar. So now I am coming to the topic and uh, I think uh, my earlier speaker has also uh, elaborate, elaborated. So uh, I will just uh, go over it uh, quickly. Uh, forest we all know and uh, you know that uh, uh, almost uh, one fourth of the Total area on earth is covered by forest. So basically it is a very important, you know, uh, resource. And uh, forest uh, provide uh, timber, fodder, wildlife, habitat, uh, industrial forest product, climate, medicinal plant, and so many things. So our uh, life uh, is very much uh, dependent upon uh, forestry. So basically, uh, Forestry system is classified uh, into three categories, very dense forests, moderate, moderately dense forest, and open forest. And you know that in, as far as our country is concerned, 21-22% uh, uh, of uh, geographical area is covered with the forestry. So, and uh, there are so many uh, minor forest products. And, uh, what we call non-timber forest product are commonly known as minor forest product. And these, excluding these wood, wood and product from animal and uh, vegetative or origin are, are called minor forest product. So all are has been called by, by my, you know, uh, earlier speaker. So basically, uh, these are some minor uh, forest products. And of course, uh, all products uh, have different use. Uh, some products are used for, you know, that uh, grazing facility or making some other utility uh, sort of thing, raw paper making, all those things. So basically, uh, uh, my area of interest is on handling and storage. So I will be focusing uh, basically uh, on the storage and packaging aspects of, uh, uh, you know, after getting the value added products. So uh, just I, I'm just showing these, uh, uh, you know, products, bamboo cane. So these bamboo canes also uh, used for, you know, paper, pulp making, packaging, and subsequent, uh, you know, stickers are covering uh, the value addition part, processing and value addition parts of uh, uh, different uh, minor forest products. So there are, Tens and dyes also we are getting from uh, forest essential oils 
uh, and from those uh, you know essentials oil perfume soap cosmetic and other products so, yeah okay so there are gum and resins also uh, which we get from uh, forest fiber flosses we are getting they have different use leaves leaves are all leaves are used for even for packaging uh, there this uh, tendu leaves we all know that uh, used as wrapper for tobacco product and uh, some leaves are used for you know plate making and other utility products so there are wide range of uh, utilization of these uh, minor forest products flavoring plants of course we get from uh, forest and these are other edible products so the processing part will be discussed and uh, and honey also honey silkworm these are products from animal origin so basically uh, i'm just just touching upon it that uh, uh, we, we after processing you know that earlier uh, speaker emphasized much of uh, on value addition part and uh, processing part so for, for sure that is very important and at the same time if we don't properly pack these processed product so we will be you know losing uh, this uh, this biomass basically uh, finished product so and these uh, minor forest product uh, are can be processed into to different products like candy jam rt rts nectar squares powder so basically uh, other fruit and vegetables are also being processed in the same way and the same way these uh, minor for, forest product products are also processed so finished products are same so packaging and storage practices will be same or similar but we have to you know depend upon uh, depend upon the the nature of the finished product and uh, nature of the available packaging material we have to decide and we have to select and other uh, minor forest products like chironji mahua avla tamarind salt seed so these are also you know required specific packaging and uh, handling and storage so now coming to uh, you know packaging we all know that why we we go for packaging and what is the purpose of packaging basically basic uh, and what are the different uh, material uh, used for uh, packaging so basic basic first principle is uh, there there should uh, the packaging system or, or storage system uh, should uh, have some certain you know properties and they, they have some certain utilities also so the containers has some property also or and packaging packaging gives some information why we go we do packaging or iske alawa agar koi aur agenda ho agar koi point ho jis se uske liye aap can you mute please spmu okay so basically sorry for the interruption sir okay not an issue basically packaging packaging is required uh, to uh, to make our product safe and it is it has various functions basically for protection is a one one for one part communication is other part and uh, what what is being stored inside so it inform the consumer also so there are uh, multi uh, functions of course convenience also so basically packaging helps in reducing product waste due to contamination and it extend the storage life required for safe transportation and uh, it, it make available the product for longer duration of time educate customer also about what about the ingredient about the when it was pa being packed what is the nutritional composition and so many things 
and of course attract also consumer to purchase and all these things are also required for uh, you know uh, forest products so basically while selecting a, a material because a lot of materials are available uh, in the in the market commercially available and we don't uh, need any you know specific material to be invented for these products already so many things are available uh, under the sun and you know that uh, we have to select based upon our our end product and uh, of course raw product also so the first and foremost important uh, thing is the respiration so the question is do all perishable product have a respiration capacity oh no not all not all perishable product have a respiration capacity so milk is also perishable honey is also perishable everything is perishable but certain products only respire and those product which respire we need different type of uh, storage system packaging system and the product which are not respire respiring we have we, we have to of different uh, sort of uh, you know packaging system so only fruit and vegetable flowers are respiring products basically and you know uh, if we want to further distinguish there are climatic and non climatic fruits so, so many categories are there so basically uh, i am just touching uh, you know uh, the introductory part of uh, this uh, packaging and uh, there are two basic fundamentals for uh, uh, storage of long time storage of uh, you know perishable products we have to decrease the temperature and we have to increase the relative humidity we we have, we have to play with these two factors and of course the packaging material also so three three things play important role while uh, packaging there are numerous technologies available advanced technologies are available uh, uh, modified atmosphere packaging control atmosphere packaging active packaging passive modified atmosphere packaging so i will i will not just i am i am telling the name and it depends upon the case to case basis which technology is used for which product vacuum packaging vacuum skin packaging gas exchange producer so many, so many things are there so many technologies are available and basically it depends of our end product so if our our product is some something say for example essential oil that the technology will be different material will be different if you want to uh, store aula as a fresh our you know approach will be different for honey the approach will be different so there is a huge diversity of these minor forest products so we cannot uh, make it a uh, some of rule that uh, okay this is this is the this is the things two three things and uh, we can go go for for the, the the this technology for packaging of all the minor forest products no it's not like that so we have to we have to select we have to decide based upon the product where we are interested interested in so now i am coming to i will discuss some you know packaging materials and we we can play with the packaging material for storing all the this forest produce so if we talk about the categorization so there are flexible packaging materials so polythene polypropylene polyvinyl and they have different pro properties this is a different science also rigid containers are also there where we you know protect our product from pressure and uh, while we want to transport a delicate thing so we we require this container rigid containers or tray and of course foams are also there so polythene used in retail packaging so similarly we we always see such type of uh, packaging of you know apples and fruits so these same principle can we can use for our uh, uh, forest products Uh, for fruits and uh, perishable nature of uh, our products so these are some 
pictures of tray packaging bags this can be used for packaging of fresh leaves mushrooms also mushroom is also an important uh, minor forest product so these are the polystyrene cup polyvinyl tray and we all are aware about every day we are coming across across uh, these type of materials of course perforated, perforated bags are there co extruded films very important for packaging of oil essential oil uh, flavoring material stretch films and these can be used for you know fresh chiranji seed amla beer jamun mango flowers mango fruit tamarind etc so these type of material we can use there are some pictures uh, and commercially these are being used also chiranji kernels dried mushroom amla candy these these are you know commercially available in the market and after a lot of research and you know proper design these these different packaging materials are recommended so designing is all designing part is also there which is also uh, very important and uh, while designing of these you know packaging material uh, there are certain parameters and properties we consider and based upon those we recommend that certain uh, material or certain type of packaging is will be most suited for a particular uh, type of minor forest product laminates are also there uh, when we want uh, that uh, external moisture or cannot interfere with the the product uh, inside the packaging material so ox oxygen transmission rate and uh, moisture transmission rate uh, that that can be taken care by these laminates and of course uh, one important property is there uh, the packaging uh, should be capable of uh, good printing aroma retention and uh, it can withhold the strength also excellent uh, brush strength also in the pouch so these type of you know laminates can be <coughs> used for packaging of dried product fruit powder uh, the basic target is to get the product with minimum deterioration in the quality or minimum alteration in the quality parameter so nowadays multi layer films are being used this is a example uh, shown here with the three layer film these are you know three laminates are there with three layer five layer seven layer and every layer has a particular type of function basically so say if you want to store oil so the the film should be of five layer five to seven layer and of course 90 to 100 micron uh, film should be there with the this this there are this is the combination basically ldtp ba pa ba uh, ea so like that so every layer as a function this layer is used for printing this polyester is used for you know protection of the printing and enhancing of the appearance the adhesive is there the polyester is there the again adhesive is there and low density polyethylene is there and the thickness is also different so different product required different type of designing and different type of selection of material pet polyethylene tetraphyllate so this is used for you know where the barrier properties from moisture oxygen carbon dioxide is required and this type of bottles and packaging material is used for storing of candy juice squares rts etc <coughs> hermetic packaging this technology is used for you know storage of raw material raw seeds as well by there are bags available what we call hermetic bag there are three uh, three four companies uh, which are supplying these type of bag and the beauty of the bag is you know they maintain hermetic conditions and uh, hermetic means the container which is absolutely impermeable to gas and vapor through its entity including its seams so uh, inside and outside environment is completely sealed basically this, this is the technology and where we can we want to 
achieve the, these type of conditions, we have to opt for these type of materials. Common hermetic containers are rigid metal can and glass bottles. And of course, other now bags are flexible bags are also available, which are used for bulk store, which can be used for bulk storage of grains, seeds, and other material. Glass glass is always a good you know uh, container as far as uh, uh, storage of uh, processed products is concerned. You all know about glass, so no need to discuss much about this glass. And it's uh, PET. PET is replacing glass, but uh, both have their advantage and disadvantage. So glass can be used for packaging of jam, jellies, marmalade, and of course that uh, raw material which we are getting from forest is used for uh, manufacturing of this jam, jellies, and other products, candies, juice, crushes also. Mushroom or mushroom also honey. So basically, the honey which we are getting from forest uh, is of good quality. It's considered to be of good quality because of you know uh, it's of uh, multiflora. Uh, the bees. There are so many trees, and uh, the, the, the 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 bees are getting nectar from different uh, source, different flowers. So it is it is to be considered more precious with uh, more. Uh, medicine value. So the storage should also be, you know, storage and processing should also be done with the utmost care. And one of the speaker is, I think, is covering this honey processing. So I'm not touching that. Other products are also there. Uh, kale fruit is there. So red is also there. So I have shown it in different color that uh, in SDP containers, these type of uh, products or plastic pouches can be used uh, for uh, storing of uh, these products. Jamun. Again, it depends what type of product you are making. For raw, definitely we have to apply the same principle which we are using uh, for our fruits. Mushroom is there. And if, if you want to process it and you know make it powder, so the, the, the material use will be diff different. Safed Musli, a very high value, you know, medi medicinal value product that can be used in plastic pouches, laminates, multi layer laminates. Ali Musli is also there. Honey is also there. In glass container we are recommending. So, you know, so basically, in nutshell, what I want to convey. Uh, minor forest products required to be packed, stored, handled the same way uh, like other uh, you know agriculture materials, and the solutions are available. Cleaning, grading, and uh, you know processing systems are available. We we need to opt. It depends upon the the, the type of uh, raw material. And uh, what we want to extract from those raw material, and of course, the packaging science is evolving like anything. New packaging material features, performance, and evolving, and that th those new technologies can be be applicable to these product also. Of course, cost is an important you know factor, and we have to optimize. How long we want to store? What is the, the the initial value of our raw material? What is its utility? So based upon that also, uh, we select a, a type of packaging or handling system uh, for these uh, products. And definitely, uh, uh, these products are of organic nature, so we should focus also on using some biodegradable polymer or the, the, the material which is very close to close or organic in nature, edible coating, food packaging like that. And now trend is towards self-opening, self-closing, self-cleaning, self-dosing, self-regulating, self-eating. These are, you know, advancement in this packaging. So basically packaging is also in selfie movement, what we call. So the consumer expecting that uh, Packaging speaks itself. 
so what we call it is active packaging or smart packaging intelligent packaging so these are also can be used for uh, packaging of these uh, minor forest product after processing value addition but there are some references which can be you know used for uh, selecting or deciding uh, packaging system for these forest products so thank you thank you very much uh, from my side so we can discuss uh, if someone want just i i have covered the brief uh, the concept of packaging though packaging is a full fledged subject and uh, every 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 uh, specific packaging should be designed with utmost sincerity and carefully by considering all the parameters uh, and the property of the packaging material in including cost economics and all those things and its utility also thank you thank you very much thank you so much sir for accepting our invitation and sharing such valuable inputs with us now we move on to the next technical session first have a Dr. Sandeep Jamal, Assistant Professor, Nitin Panchawar, Gauhati Campus. Sir has obtained his doctoral degree in food engineering and technology from Saint Lambert in Institute of Engineering and Technology. Sir has completed his M.Sc. in food science and technology from Devi Lal University, followed by M.Tech in food engineering from Guru Jambeshwar University of Science and Technology, Hisar. He got a fellowship from Masa for International PG course on food safety and security, Hebrew University of Jerusalem, Israel. Sir is having more than 11 years of teaching and industrial experience. He has published various research articles in national and international journals and undergone several trainings on food safety and quality assurance. We welcome you to this webinar, sir. So, very good morning to one and all present here. First of all, I would like to thank the PMFME division of Neftam Thanjavur, especially Shunija ma'am, who has given this opportunity to me to deliver a talk over. Processing and value addition of honey. As per the European Union, <clears throat> honey is defined as the natural sweet substance produced by honeybee from the nectar of the plants or from secretion of living part of the plants or insects, which the bee collect, transform by combining different substances of its own. And store and leave in honeycombs for ripening and maturing. Coming to the classification, honey is categorized mainly into three major categories. It is on the basis of its origin, its processing methods, and its end uses. So let's discuss the classification one by one. On the basis of origin, honey is mainly categorized into four groups. first one is your blossom honey which honey bee collect mainly from the nectar of the plants second type of honey is honey dew honey which the bee collect from the secretions of the living part or secretions of the specific insects the third one is monofloral honey as the name indicate if the origin or the source is only single flora that kind of honey is called monofloral honey And the last one in this category is polyflora or multiflora honey so if it is collected from the multiple flower sources the nectar is from the multiple flowers that kind of honey is called multiflora or polyflora honey based on the processing system if we'll talk as you have seen in the first slide the comb honey a piece of honeycomb as such packed in trays or in different packaging materials if it is sold is called as comb honey strained honey after straining out that honey from the comb is categorized under strained honey category chunk honey if both like strained honey and comb honey kept in the jar is called as chunk honey apart from this extracted honey which is nowadays available in the market is like after by using centrifugation method if we are extracting filtering and pro after processing it is called extracted honey crystalline if it settles or crystallizes and creamed honey semi crystalline kind of honey depending upon the end uses whatever honey which is available in the market for 
regular consumption comes under the category of table honey. Some specific parameters if honey is not meeting, which is required for uh, honey to be sold as table honey, that kind of honey comes under the category of industrial or baker's honey category. Apart from this, the third one is black or bitter honey. Some specific plants, for example, like rubber, rubber plant, if honey is taken from that kind of uh, plant's flora, which is not in sweet, much sweet, you can say, and darker in color, comes under the category of black or bitter honey. Coming to the world honey statistics, India is ranked as sixth in the total honey production worldwide. The major shareholding is of China, which is producing around more than 27.5%, followed by Turkey, US, Iran, Russia, and India's contribution is around 3.5% of the total honey production, which is almost more than 100,000. Talking about the major honey producing states in the country, which include West Bengal, UP, Bihar, and Punjab, altogether produces more than 60% of the total honey production in India. And it is mainly practiced by landless or marginal farmers which gives direct and indirect employment to the uh, rural people, around 3 lakh employment every year it is generating. And it also helps in improving the production of your cultivars by the help of cross-pollination. Increase in the production depends how much amount of cross-pollination has been taken place by keeping these beehives in and around the fields. So, it varies from 5% to 3000%. We will talk what are all the things present in honey. <clears throat> Compositional parameters. So, as you can see in this slide, the major contribution is of sugars or carbohydrate, which is up to 80%. The next major ingredient is moisture, which should not be more than 20%. Apart from that, the major sugars which honey contain are glucose, fructose, sucrose and few more in the lesser amount. The major sugars if I talk are glucose and fructose which all together contributes around 80 to 85 percent of the total carbohydrate content. Apart from this, honey mainly contain vitamin B complex and C. Talking about the proteins, almost all amino, amino acids has been reported in different kinds of honey. Although their uh, uh, amount is not significant as per the uh, requirement in our human body, the main uh, amino acid present is proline. Apart from that, it contains all essential minerals like your calcium, copper, iron, magnesium. So it's a kind of concentrated food because of having sugars. So this is the aromatic profile, volatile profile of honey. It contains acids, esters, alcohols, ketones, aldehydes. So acids may be volatile and non-volatile. Talking about the regulations of FSSAI, what are all the standards they have fixed? The major standards, as you can see in this slide, is like specific gravity, which should be of a minimum 1.35 in comparison to water. Moisture content should not be more than 20%. Total reducing sugars, minimum 65%. Sucrose content, minimum 5% should have to be there. Fructose is to glucose ratio, which is very important and uh, help in defining whether the honey will remain in a liquefied phase or it may have the tendency to crystallize. That is. That should have to be like 0.95% for, for to 1.5%. Ash content should not have to be more than 0.5. Acidity should have to be less than 0.20. HMF content, which is like uh, 
also considered as criteria for judging the freshness or minimal processing for honey which develops due to prolonged storage or high temperature elevated temperature processing or storage condition so after processing and blending it should not have to be more than 80 mg per kg of the honey pollen count an important parameter to check the authenticity of honey the total pollen count should have to be should not have to be more than 25000 diastase activity another uh, you can say important uh, component responsible for functional properties should not have to be less than 3 diastase number apart from that some other parameters are there like c4 sugars proline and other parameters which you can check from the slide if we'll talk about the <clears throat> organic honey as it's a minor forest produce and most of the like uh, if it is collected from forest it should have to be you can say from the naturally grown vegetation so some norms by european union set for categorizing honey as organic so the apiary or you can say the beehive should be placed in such a condition such an environment where either the organically cultivated crops or you can say spontaneously grown vegetation should have to be there in and around 3 km radius of those beehives artificial feeding must be organically certified here artificial feeding if some of you may ask you what is artificial feeding so just to tell ki during off season when floras are not available flowers are not available at that time beekeepers they used to keep uh, sugar syrup bowls in and around your beehive to feed the bees so that they will sustain that off flowering season so that kind of feeding is called artificial feeding so chemical fertilized strictly banned beehives should have to be made from natural material like woods even bee combs also from the natural wax beekeepers should allow to consume honey during their off uh, flowering season or less forage time and for packaging and storage the material should not have to be washed with the chemicals and it should be mostly in the form of glass jars coming to our main uh, title processing of honey as you can see in this slide uh, the first picture indicates a wooden bee hive which contains bee combs when the honey is fully ripened we have to take out the bee hives uh, bee combs you can say and just by 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 with the help of knife by opening the mouth of the comb after that we used to keep it in a machine which is rotate centrifugally for extraction of honey out of these combs either manual machine or electrically operated machine can, are also available nowadays in the market so by rotating centrifugally with a with a centrifugal force the honey came out of the combs and it get collected at the bottom so this is the honey harvesting process coming to the processing this raw honey collected after harvesting we used to preheat at a 40 degree to 45 degree temperature just to reduce the viscosity and increase the flow properties of honey so that it can be easily strained and filtered by using muslin cloth or uh, filters with having pore size of less than or up to 80 micrometers after that the pasteurization process starts where we used to heat it around 60 to 65 degrees centigrade at a holding time of 25 minutes after that we used to cool it at 40 to 45 degree for filling into the bottles and capping and storage takes place after that so this is the processing process which chart you can see 
but as it is a super saturated sugar solution some of you may have this query in your minds ki why do we need to process honey when it contains up to 80% of sugar which is more than your jam so it is self preserved yes i agree honey is self preserved but we used to process or pasteurize it because of two major reasons the first one is to deal tendency of crystallization because once you heat it at 60 65 degrees centigrade the pre existing crystals will dissolve and with filtration the nuclei for the crystal we can easily remove the residues and other things after that the second reason is to destroy the osmophilic yeast or you can say the spoilage causing microorganisms when honey remains in a liquefied stage it never spoils but what happens glucose is having the tendency to crystallize by releasing water and after releasing water it converts into it converts into d glucose which settles at the bottom after settling or crystallization what happens that the sugar concentration reduces in the upper phase due to this crystallization phase separation takes place and in upper phase Sugar concentration reduces. The first, after which you can say the spoilage starts. This osmophilic yeast, by seeing that lower sugar concentration activates and it causes spoilage of flavoring, fermentation, kind of things. So, which is non-desirable, or you can say which causes spoilage of honey. So to keep it in liquefied phase for a longer period we used to heat it at this temperature but scientifically nowadays it has proven that heating honey causes certain changes in its functional properties in its vitamin value and other nutrients like its uh, you can say microbiological activity is also affected and generation of hydroxymethyl furfural takes place which is non desirable or you can say it's carcinogenic compound it should have to be at a minimal level so apart from this conventional or traditional heating process there are certain methods which can be by using them we can reduce these losses or you can say we can minimize these losses few of them are like again similar to your heating microwave heating or infrared heating few are like minimal heating processes like your ultrasound uh, processing technology and non thermal processing like membrane processing kind of things but all these uh, new approaches also comes with some drawbacks and some benefits in case of microwave heat processing like around 71 degree centigrade for uh, heating for 2 to 4 minutes this is the shelf life of honey around 15 degrees more than the traditional uh, your processing or processing method in case of infrared heat processing it up to 8 minutes at nir in, in a batch oven is enough to keep it in a crystalline form ultrasound processing which should be usually we are practicing in food from 9 to 18 kilohertz ultrasonic waves which causes i can say which produces micro mechanical shock waves responsible for cell lysis and uh, ultimately leads to the complete destruction or inactivation of your osmophilic yeast apart from this it produces crystallization and keeps it honey and it has been observed that the shelf life of honey as compared to your traditional uh, you can say heat processing method increases 20% non thermal membrane processing retains 100% nutrients no you can say uh, chemical changes are taking place the only drawback of this membrane processing because we are using like uh, a membrane of pore size uh, 450 nanometers to filter honey which also removes the existing pollens as i told in my that fssci standards slide ki it's an important criteria for checking the your this uh, 
authenticity of honey so it completely removes the pollen after which it is stuck to check basically like whether it's a pure honey or it's a it's an adulterated one otherwise membrane filtration is the best method apart from this some functional properties because of which honey is mainly consumed <coughs> here in this slide you can see <coughs> honey is having antioxidant activities rich source of antioxidants antioxidants if i'll briefly explain in every human being there are certain you can say biochemical changes are taking place when we are consuming food three times in a day we are taking for example i am a rice eater person so i am taking rice or you can say starch which get converted into glucose in my body to give energy that's why immediately after eating food our blood sugar level increases and this glucose released in our blood conversion from starch to glucose is like convert conversion con converting uh, complex molecules into simpler one again this glucose gets stored in the form of glycogen <clears throat> in our body and whenever required it keeps on coming in our blood to give energy again conversion from glucose to glycogen both these processes are called anabolism and catabolism all together called metabolism so during this metabolic activity thousands of chemical reactions are taking place in our body which causes free radical formation and these free radicals are not you can say desirable in our body but they, this free radical formation takes place in everyone's body those who are in stress those who are uh, smokers or drinkers in their body this free radical formation is in the accelerated form but it happens in everyone's body so these antioxidants helps to quench this free radicals or neutralize this charged oxygen molecules so which is helpful in reducing the cancer cases because excessive free radical formation causes uncontrolled cell growth and ultimately leads to cancer so it's helpful in you can say reducing the chances of cancers because of having its antioxidant activity anti atherogenic activities in some of the compounds of honey because of uh, atherogenesis you can say uh, uh, fatty depositions whatever food we are eating especially your animal fats if you are consuming it contain ldl and hdl low density lipoproteins and high density lipoproteins which increases your uh, uh, one is called good cholesterol hdl and ldl is bad cholesterol it causes fatty ldl causes uh, fatty deposition in your arteries which reduces the flexibility of your arteries which leads to certain kind of cardiovascular disorder so honey is having anti atherogenic properties which helps to uh, you can say squench this ldl or free uh, sorry fatty acid depositions ar around your arteries so that's another beneficial effect antimicrobial activities uh, because of having uh, glucose oxidase enzyme in honey glucose get converted into gluconic acid and hydrogen peroxide hydrogen peroxide is having antibacterial properties which helps in curing or healing of the wounds traditionally if you'll see our ancestors they were using honey over the wounds which helps in curing or healing of the wound antimicrobial activity if i'll tell that honey is having very less amount of free water so microorganisms they won't get free water to grow and because of having high sugar content they cannot grow in and around your wounds so hepatoprotective action the ability of chemicals to protect your liver so it is having certain chemicals which are responsible to protect your liver so it's a prebiotic you can say food for the probiotic it helps your gut bacteria to flourish and to increase your digestion and helps in proper digestion of the nutrients as it contains glucose and fructose so those honeys which are having higher 
fructose content although this glucose to fructose uh, content varies glucose content varies from 25 to 40 percent and uh, fructose content varies from 30 to 45 percent so those honeys which are having higher fructose content they take they are they comes under the category of low gi foods so it requires lesser amount of insulin to metabolize but here with this point i'm not recommending honey as a sugar alternative for you can say uh, your diabetic patients it's not recommended but huh, when compared to sugar there are certain types of honey which comes under the low gi category antimicrobial effect antibacterial effects already discussed it helps in healing of the wound in the ayurveda detailed things are mentioned about this it's used in cosmetic because of its antioxidant activities it was used in mummification of the dead bodies ancestrally because of this free radical formation <clears throat> aging takes place and as it contains antioxidants honey contains antioxidants so which reduces the cell lysis and slows down the aging process of human as it squints the free radical formation it acts as a squinting agent fresh honey is having higher antioxidant capacity and it reduces at a rate of 30% in every 6 months so try to consume fresh honey with having higher antioxidant activities it has been like from last 30 40 years adulteration of honey has been reported so people they are adulterating it directly and indirectly indirectly as i have told like when we are giving artificial feeding to honey uh, to to the bees in off flowering season some of the you can say uh, farmers they used to extract that artificially feeded sugar syrup converted into honey by the bee and they are selling it in the market so not recommended and it comes under the category of indirect adulteration in direct adulteration different kind of syrups they are added into honey and nowadays from china a lot of uh, syrups with the labeling all pass category are also available which has been like part in the past few years as the adulterant people they are using toxins in honey <clears throat> although there is no such case has been reported till now uh, but there are chances that if the nectar has been taken from some allergic plants or toxic uh, plants it may cause some kind of allergies and you can say we are only pasteurizing it so we are killing Uh, vegetative cells uh, so aquatic bacteria they may survive in honey that's why it is not recommended for infants up to 11 months to be fed with honey there are certain products available in the market crystalline co crystalline or your table honey and different kind of flavored honeys they are there in the market as per the recommended dietary allowance you can say uh, <coughs> 50 to 80 grams of honey can be consumed depending upon your body weight you can say 1 gram per kg of your body weight you can consume every day and you'll have the beneficial the beneficial effects of honey will start reflecting in 3 to 6 weeks and these are some of the um, renowned brands available in the indian market that's all from my side thank you if you guys have any queries you are most welcome thank you so much sir our next technical talk is on uh, processing and value added products from vishnu anuradha shri vastava scientist I say I'm part of Mushroom Research Solar. Madam is a part of BSc Agriculture and MSc Food Technology from Govind Bala Pant University of Agriculture and Technology, Pantnagar. She joined ICR as scientist for technology at ICR Research Complex for Eastern Region 
Research Center, Ranchi. Her research work has been published as papers in more than 17 peer-reviewed journals, 10 popular articles, 4 book chapters, and more than 3 international and national conference proceedings. We welcome you, ma'am, to this webinar. Once again, very good afternoon to everyone listening to this webinar. Uh, my name is Anuradha. I have been working for the last five years as a scientist at Directorate of Mushroom Research, which is, which is situated in Solon. And in this uh, uh, lecture, we are going to talk about processing and value-added products from mushroom. So before going into uh, the processing, I would uh, like to tell you about what are the nutritive benefits and what are the medicinal properties of mushroom because mushroom as we know we many people like it but most of the people like mushroom for its taste only but apart from its very rich taste very rich umami flavor mushroom is a so uh, is very nutritionally rich and apart from nutritive value it has a lot of medicinal value value also so i would like to tell you very briefly about these things also uh, that will definitely motivate you to in, include this uh, very interesting commodity in your daily diet. So mushroom, as you all know, is a, a fungus, uh, but it is very high in protein. If you will compare it to uh, no, any other vegetable, because normally we keep mushrooms in vegetable category, these are high in protein. On dry weight basis, they have uh, about 25 to 30% protein, which is very high. They are high in fiber. They have very low quantity of fat. And whatever quantity of fat is present, that is good quality. Because it contains PUFA, polyunsaturated fatty acid. Again, mushroom is a low calorie product, low sodium products. That's why it is good for people who have high blood pressure problem. And it has no cholesterol and also it has some compound which helps in lowering cholesterol. That's why it is good for lowering your cholesterol level and good for your heart. It has no starch and very less sugar. That's why it, it is also low calorie. And if you want to see mineral, uh, they, mushrooms are very good source of few minerals like uh, copper, selenium and potassium. And one very interesting thing is vitamin D. Nowadays, we know vitamin D deficiency is very common throughout the world. So mushroom is the only, you can say, vegan source of uh, vitamin D. Because vitamin D generally is not present in non-animal sources or in vegetarian sources. So mushroom is one so such source which has vitamin D and significant amount of vitamin D. So if you'll include mushroom in your daily diet, it can help alle alleviate the vitamin D deficiency. And apart from vitamin D, vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is another such uh, vitamin which is generally not present in uh, vegetarian sources. But mushroom, again, mushroom has vitamin B12. So that's why you should eat mushrooms. Uh, as I was telling you, apart from nutritional value, mushrooms are, they have many medicinal values also. There are different types of mushrooms. Some mushrooms are categorized as culinary mushroom, which we eat uh, like after cooking at home, like uh, any other vegetable, like button mushroom, oyster mushroom, shiitake mushroom. There are certain other types of mushroom which have pure medicinal value, and they are generally used for nutraceutical purposes only. And uh, some mushrooms such as cordyceps militaris, or cordyceps sinensis, or ganoderma mushroom, heresia mushroom. These are some mushrooms which have medicinal properties. So apart from these medicinal mushrooms, all mushrooms have uh, one or other medicinal value. They improve our in overall immunity. They Some of the mushrooms have anti-cancerous properties, anti-aging properties. And as I told you, that they, are, they have some compounds which help in lowering cholesterol level. So they are good for our heart. They improve our bone health. And mushrooms also have one compound which is very helpful for diabetic people. So because it helps reducing blood sugar level. So three uh, lifestyle, major lifestyle diseases, high blood pressure, diabetes, and heart diseases. Mushrooms help in, helps in controlling all these three diseases. And cancer again, which is one very uh, rapidly growing disease uh, uh, worldwide, mushrooms have some com antioxidant compounds which help in controlling cancer. 
eating cancer also. So the lecture is about mushroom processing. If you see mushroom processing scenario, there are available selling there many types of mushrooms. Around the world, more than 200 species of mushrooms are consumed. And out of these species, few are cultivated and few grow wild, wild either in the forest or in other wasteland. And people who have knowledge, local people, they have knowledge, they gather these mushrooms, they, they consume it, they sell it also sometimes. But either they are cultivable mushroom or wildly growing mushroom, major part of mushrooms are consumed in fresh forms only. Uh, around the world uh, but as mushrooms are very perishable in nature mushroom has around 90 to 95 percent moisture and that's why they are highly perishable most of the mushroom has a shelf life of one or two days only so then it becomes necessary to process it into various value-added products in order to increase its shelf life that's why value addition or processing of mushroom is important one thing is to reduce the losses because of its perishability and by processing or value adding uh, the farmer or the person who is doing the value addition can enhance their income also and then can boost mushroom consumption also because many people might not uh, like to uh, consume mushroom in fresh form but when you process it into different types of value added products May, a lot of people can try it, even the people, even in the area where those mushrooms are not popular or commonly growing, people in those areas can also try this mushroom and this will again help in boosting the mushroom consumption in our country. So as I was telling you, few of the mushrooms are cultivable. So these are five commercially important mushrooms in our country, which are commercially important and these all five can be cultivated also. Apart from these five, other types of mushrooms can also be, be cultivated at DMR, Directorate of Mushroom Research. We have standardized cultivation technologies for around 20 types of mushrooms. and But these five are most commercially uh, grown in our country, with respect to our country. And the most common one, as you all know, is button mushroom. As you can see in this picture, more than 70% of mushrooms in our country is button mushroom. So for most of the people, when you talk, when you say mushroom, they picture this only, button mushroom. But this is not the only mushroom which is commercially being cultivated in our country. Other mushrooms are oyster mushroom, which is just after uh, button mushroom. This mushroom is picking up really fast uh, in all over the India because it is very easily cultivable. This is oyster mushroom. And the other uh, thing is button mushroom can be grown only in cold region if you want to grow it uh, without providing uh, control environmentally controlled unit because it requires low temperature 15 18 degrees centigrade but oyster mushroom can be cultivated in high temperature also it it can be grown in a variety of temperature 12 degrees centigrade to 35 degrees centigrade so oyster mushroom is becoming popular day by day other mushrooms, this is paddy straw mushroom and this is very popular in one state in our country, Odisha. Odisha in Odisha, this, this is a popular mushroom and this again grows in very hot and humid climate. Milky mushroom, uh, this, this again is a tropical mushroom which grows at high temperature. And earlier it was popular in southern part of our country only, but now nowadays it has becoming it has started becoming popular in northern parts also because again this mushroom also requires high temperature for growth. Shiitake mushroom, which you can see this is very tasty mushroom, and apart from its very good taste, it has very good medicinal properties also. That's why it is categorized as semi-medicinal mushroom. This mushroom has very strong anti-cancerous properties and cholesterol lowering properties. And if you'll see worldwide, this is the most uh, commonly, uh, uh, this is the most commonly um, consumed mushroom and most traded mushroom worldwide. This is shiitake mushroom. So if you'll see the post-harvest aspect or the processing harvest, if I'll start from the processing, just up, this is the button mushroom and uh, this is 
the stage when we harvest it just after harvesting we remove the last part of stem because uh, some soil or compost is adhering to it and then we can pack it so i'll want to discuss the packing if you want to sell mushroom in fresh form because packing and selling mushroom in fresh form is also a kind uh, is also a type of value addition so if you'll see in the market generally you'll see two types of packaging of for fresh mushroom one you will see these types of trays these are called punnets and generally commonly available type of trays are the plastic trays you, and generally you will see blue color plastic trays and which are covered with pvc film or cling film what we call but nowadays as single use plastic uh, our country is banning single use plastic uh, so the fruit might be some environmentally safe uh substitute for this plastic trays which could be paperboard or pulpboard trays and we can cover it with pvc film so generally and in the retail size of these packs you will see 200 gram or to 400 gram will generally be the range you won't say you won't see 1 kg pack of mushroom generally in the market so the retail size of pack is generally small and this trays covered with pvc film is one type of packaging and another packaging which you will see is simple polyethylene or polypropylene pouches and so one thing you should uh, uh, keep in mind if you want to pack in polyethylene plastic pouches 100 gauge thickness plastic uh, pouches you should use and you should make perforation in this packs otherwise what will happen moisture will start accumulating inside uh, the pack and will, that will spoil the mushroom so these are differently packed oyster mushroom these are different types of oyster oyster mushroom has a range of colors range of varieties and as i was telling you they can be grown in a range of uh, climatic conditions this is king oyster this one is king oyster this gray one is sajar kaju another strain of mushroom so these are different types of packaging you can see plastic trays are there paper bowl trays are there simple plastic pouches are there these kinds of packaging you can go for paddies from mushroom is very interesting mushroom i told you this is a mushroom which is very common in odisha some other states are also cultivating but in odisha people are very fond of this mushroom but this mushroom has one problem this mushroom has shelf life of just one day so just after harvesting you have to sell it on the same day but people in uh odisha are so fond of it that without any proper packing just by selling it on the road side most of the farmers are able to sell it because people are liking it so much but again it has a problem of shelf life otherwise button mushroom a shelf life will be 2 to 3 days oyster mushroom again you can keep up to 2 days but this paddy straw mushroom is has a limitation it has the shortest shelf life and one more thing you cannot keep this paddy straw mushroom at refrigerated condition because chilling injury happen so that's again another limitation but otherwise this mushroom is very tasty if you get any chance you can taste this mushroom milky mushroom this looks very beautiful this tastes also good and this this is a mushroom which has the longest shelf life if you will compare compare it with other types of mushroom you can keep it easily even at high temperature you can keep it easily for 3 to 4 days or even up to a week you can keep it if temperature conditions are uh, slightly better so but these milky mushroom are slightly bigger in size so you will have to make bigger packs like this this is shiitake mushroom so perfectly mature shiitake mushroom will look like this but if you if you get over mature it will look like this so this is the correct stage for harvesting shiitake mushroom these are different packs of shiitake mushroom again those punnets covered with pvc and pouches also different types of packaging so transportation uh, if you want to transport it for a longer longer distance you should have a refrigerated van for transporting uh, mushrooms uh, because uh, again as i was telling you these are very perishable for shorter distance you can manage uh, you can also use crushed ice pack to maintain low temperature but try to maintain low temperature while transporting it and while marketing it if you want to export mushroom then you will have to have a dedicated cool chain 
marketing of mushroom is mostly unorganized if you leave uh, button mushroom button mushroom is one established mushroom in our country and it has organized marketing channel but apart from button mushroom if you want to sell at any other kind of mushroom the other four mushroom which i was talking about or any wildly growing mushroom which people collect or any other mushroom you will have to work a lot on the marketing you will have to create the marketing channel for market mostly organized uh, <coughs> uh, one uh, stain tooth uh, the mushroom growers in island he said mushroom growers have mystified me for years they put so much effort into growing and so little into selling so marketing is the key if someone wants to grow mushroom someone wants to sell mushroom they'll have to put um, words on ma marketing now i'll come to processing this was about if you want to sell mushroom in fresh form now as i said shelf life is less so you will have to you should go for processing if you are not able to sell it in fresh form so if you'll see processing of mushroom three most common types of processing one is drying another is canning and third is picking these three are most common types. So I'll discuss all these three one by one. First is drying. All types of mushrooms can be dried, and drying solves the problem. How? Because mushrooms have 90% moisture. That's why their shelf life is low. When we dry mushroom, we reduce moisture content from 90 to less than 10%. That's why shelf life of dried mushroom is up to one year. If the condition is, you should keep it airtight. Just after drying, you should keep it in airtight container, then the shelf life will be up to one year. So drying can be done. Sun drying can also be done, and cabinet air drying. This is a mechanical drying. This that can also be done. Uh, of course, all types of mushroom can be dried, but few can be easily dried, and few might create some problem. Like button mushroom may create some problem while drying. On the other hand, oh. Oyster mushroom is most easily dried mushroom because of its structure, and you could many of many of farmer in our country they are drying it in sun only. So if you can if you want to dry it in sun, just spread it in single layer. If you get good sun in your area, you will be able to dry mushroom in one to two days. If you want to use cabinet air drying or dryer, then temperature is very important. You should never go beyond sixty degrees centigrade. And the best quality mushroom you will get when you will keep temperature around 45 to 50 degrees centigrade. In these dryer, there is a provision to set temperature. So temperature, if you will keep 45 to 50 degrees centigrade, you will get best quality mushroom. Because while drying, mushrooms may may change their color. They turn brown. That's one problem which is occurring, especially in button mushroom, because of enzymatic browning. So just spread in that these dryers they have, they also have tray just spread it single layer and you will dry once they will be properly dried pack them in a tight container and they'll have a shelf life of 6 months to up to 1 year okay these dried mushroom how you will consume these dried mushroom just you will soak it in hot water for 1 hour just before consuming it they'll again rehydrate you can just cook these mushroom like any like any fresh mushroom and these dried mushroom can also be converted into powder and this powder we also use for preparing certain other value added products from mushroom and few people are also selling these mushroom powder as health supplement because as i told you mushroom has many nutritional and medicinal properties so people are selling these powder as a good source of protein for controlling diabetes high blood pressure cholesterol problems and vitamin d supplement as a vitamin d supplement also. so solar drying can also be used it is very good for mushrooms because generally temperature required is 45 50 degrees centigrade which is easily achievable using a solar dryer these are some dried oyster mushroom products which are available in the market dried shiitake mushroom products which are available in the market and dried morel morel is a mushroom which cannot be cultivated till now in our country although dmr has been working in this area this is a highly prized and very tasty mushroom which uh, naturally grows in the upper himalayan region of our country and people in that area mostly jammu kashmir or some part of himachal and uttarakhand 
people, local people who have indigenous knowledge, they collect this, these mushrooms from the forest, they dry it and they sell it at very high price. Few thousand rupees per kg they'll get, 30, 40,000 rupees or even more. So people are selling dried morals like this. This is, in Hindi, this is called Gucci mushroom. <laughs> so I was telling you dried mushroom can also be converted into powder. And these powder also people are selling as uh, supplement, shiitake mushroom powder and oyster mushroom powder. Next, this was about drying. Next type of processing was canning. Canning is uh, when you pack any commodity in a can, tin can, and then you subject it to sterilization in autoclave, then that product is called canned, uh, canned uh, product, and that has a shelf life of even up to three years at room temperature. So you can see there is a substantial increase in shelf life. That's why canning is very popular. You will see a lot of canning units in our country, mostly for button mushroom and Many canning units are exporting these uh, canned mushrooms and many hotels and big hotels and restaurants in our country, they are also buying mushroom in canned form only because that way they can have a product of higher shelf life and of uniform quality. So how canning is done? These are the steps uh, which are follow being followed in canning. And canning of butter mushroom can be done in slice form also and in whole. In both way you can do it. So these are the steps. First, you'll have to wash mushroom. Then you subject it to blanching, which is a hot water treatment for five to 10 minutes. Then you'll fill those can mushroom, those blanched mushroom into cans, along with brine solution, one to 2% salt and 0.1% citric acid it has. Then you exhaust all the air from inside the can because air might create some problem. Then after removing all the air, you seal those cans and you subject it to canning or sterilization which occurs in a canning retort. Canning or sterilization is a high temperature, high pressure processing of mushroom. So by processing mushroom in high temperature, high pressure, you will kill all the micro microbes which are present inside the cans. And as the cans are hermetically sealed, the microbes will not be able to enter from outside. That's why this product becomes shelf stable. Then after canning, you cool it by dipping into cold water and then the product can product is ready which has a shelf life of three, up to three years. So for setting up of a canning unit, uh, these are all the machineries which you require and for a uh, capacity of 50 tons mushroom per year, around 40 lakhs investment you will need for setting. So it requires some investment for setting up of a canning unit. A number of canned butter mushroom products you will see in the market, in the Indian market. A lot of can candies are there. Paddy straw mushrooms are also being, can also be canned. All types of mushrooms can be canned. Uh, although in India, we are not canning all types of mushroom, but worldwide you can see all types of canned mushroom. Canned oyster mushroom, you can see canned shiitake mushroom. So this was about canning. Then next, most popular type of valuable products from mushroom is mushroom pickle. All types of mushroom can be converted into pickle and pickle is one such type of processing which we have been doing in our country since very long time. So, uh, button, oyster, milky, paddy, so all types of pickle can be prepared. Shelf life is up to one year. Uh, excuse me. Hello? Yes. Uh, uh, Okay, I'm in the middle of something I'll talk to you later. Sorry. And uh, you can get very good price by selling this processed uh, mushroom product, pickle mushroom pickle. People even are selling these at 1000 rupees per kg. So this is how pickle can be prepared from mushroom. There's not much science because People, ladies in our country have been preparing mushroom pickles since a long time, since ancient time. So we wash mushroom, cut it into pieces, we blanch it, and then we mix salt with it and leave it overnight. Salt helps in removing the moisture. The next day we drain excess moisture. We shallow fry it. Frying, it one frying is one peculiar thing while preparing pickle from mushroom. So once you are preparing pickle, uh, you just after mixing it with salt, removing the excess water, you shallow fry it. 
with some oil so so as to remove all the moisture because moisture may create problem with the shellfish then you will add spices oil of your choice and vinegar we add vinegar because vinegar helps us uh, for preserving the mushroom pickle and vinegar to also give the sour taste and sodium benzoate which is a preservative can also be added that's how you can prepare all the spices or uh, everything i have also given so this is a standard recipe this is how you can prepare pickle from any mushroom so that's how people this is they are preparing oyster mushroom pickle. they are shallow frying it and then they are adding spices and everything mushroom pickle is ready pickle is very popular product and which can be very easily can be prepared at home scale or also for from all types of mushroom button mushroom pickle oyster mushroom pickle milky and paddy straw mushroom pickle all types of pickle people are preparing now i'll discuss and very briefly about other value added products apart from pickle mushrooms can also be uh, prepared into candies like amla candy we can also prepare mushroom candy from using button mushroom mushroom murabba or mushroom preserve mushroom jam can also be prepared mushroom sauce can be prepared it is again one very good product where we add tomato with mushroom to prepare a, a pizza sauce kind of sauce or spread using mushroom mushroom chips is again one very potential product and oyster mushroom chips and even uh, shiitake mushroom chips are already people are processing these products not in our country but uh, in uh, china or indonesia people are already selling mushroom chips and it's a very good product generally for preparing mushroom chips the technology which is used is vacuum frying technology because we have to fry these mushrooms at very low temperature otherwise burning happens Uh, some other products which you can prepare from mushroom using mushroom powder i told you much dried mushroom can be ground and can be converted into powder this powder can be used to prepare some mushroom based bakery products like mushroom cookies mushroom bread mushroom cake mushroom based muesli bar mushroom soup mix is again one interesting product where you can use that mushroom powder along with some other ingredient and can prepare this mushroom soup mix which can be instantly used to prepare mushroom soup because mushroom soup is a again very commonly consumed product from mushroom mushroom based instant noodles some local snacks like mushroom bhujia similar to aloo bhujia mushroom bhujia can also be prepared mushroom badi mushroom papad mushroom based health drink powder all these products can be prepared these are all the <clears throat> we also prepared some mushroom millet products because millet is again one very healthy commodity and 2013 is international year of millets so we also combined mushroom with millet and we prepared mushroom millet cookies and mushroom millet nutri bar these products have already been launched uh, from the brand name eat right by indian institute of millet research <coughs> this is soup mix mushroom can be mixed with other vegetable to prepare mushroom vegetable mix soup mix in the simplest way of fortifying mushroom powder is just adding mushroom with our regular atta wheat flour and as per studies you can add up to 10% of mushroom powder with wheat flour and this uh, wheat flour you can use for your regular chapati or paratha or roti chips preserve candies this is a pasta sauce or spread this is papad badiyan nuggets jam nutraceutical products can also be prepared from using mushroom powders which helps in relieving a lot of disorders mushroom based nutraceutical products or dietary supplements are also available in the market in either in powder form or in capsule form where they a lot um, many medicinal mushroom are being used canoderma mushroom is one very popular medicinal mushroom reishi mushroom their extract powder is available uh and other um, ganoderma based nutraceutical capsules you can see here cordyceps cordyceps sinensis and cordyceps militaris is again one very a uh, good uh, medicinal mushroom and these are uh, cordyceps based dietary supplements in capsule form and some other mushroom based some other mushroom like shiitake is also uh, shiitake mushroom or turkey tail mushroom there are many types of lion's mane hirishium mushroom 
So these are those nutraceutical products. Some multiple mushroom based nutraceutical where they are using extract of 10 mushrooms. Some of these mushrooms will be widely growing, some of these will be cultivated and they are, they are making 10 in one mushroom mix. So some such neutral critical products are also there. Lot of mushroom recipes you can prepare at home. Either your are Indian recipes, mushroom curries, mushroom pulao, biryani, Chinese recipes. In Chinese the recipes, mushroom go very well. Mushroom pakoras, very tasty mushroom pakoras can be prepared in continental recipes like mushroom pizzas, burgers, everything mushroom goes really well. With this, I with a request to include mushroom in your diet, the healthy, very tasty commodity, and you will definitely get uh, uh, good results. You will get a very good uh, uh, consume mushroom. Milk. Thank you. Moving ahead to the next technical talk on processing and value added products from tamarind. For this session, we have with us Dr. V. Panimuthu, Professor and Research Engineer, U.S. Sir is basically a graduate in Agricultural Engineering from Tamil Nadu Agricultural University, Coimbatore, and acquired his postgraduate and doctoral degrees from the prestigious IIT Karakur. Sir has done his postdoctoral training in MCGL University, Canada. His research works have been published as papers in more than seven peer-reviewed journals, five book chapters, and one patent. Sir has also established Center of Excellence for Processing and Value Addition of Small Millets. Sir has received several awards and laurels such as uh, ICR Best Teacher Award, Bio Fellowship Award. Currently, Sir is serving as Special Officer, College of Agricultural Engineering, GKVK Bangalore, University of Agricultural Sciences, Bangalore. We welcome you, Sir. Please share your screen. Good morning to all of you. Uh, Processing and value addition of minor forest produce, uh, the tamarind is my topic. Uh, let me tell you something about this because the time is two, 20 minutes. Original presentation was one hour 20 minutes, one hour 15 minutes. So I tried to cut short and uh, uh, give you as far as information as possible. Uh, you know, if it is the tamarind, we call it as tamarind as indica, uh, uh, it's a dicot. Uh, uh, it's a it's a mainly originated from Africa and some people from India as well. And a very important, uh, economically very important produce because uh, the, in the in case of uh, you know, tribal areas like Chhattisgarh, uh, 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 Jharkhand, and other places, the, for the tribals this is the uh, main uh, source of income. And uh, we call it by many names. And uh, the important uh, uh, producers of uh, tamarind in this country are uh, the Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, all southern states, Kerala, Andhra Pradesh. You can see in this table who are producing, what is the share. Of course, this data is old because I am getting confusing data from different sources. So I put it 2015-16 data uh, for you. If you go and search, you will get confusing data. Some places you don't get Karnataka name at all. Uh, this is a share uh, of uh, tamarind from different states. You can see Maharashtra, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, all southern, uh, the Deccan uh, no, Plateau uh, states. Then you have some other northeastern states also have some tamarind. Of course, Jharkhand and the Chhattisgarh and Jharkhand also produce a lot of tamarind. And maybe the quantity wise is not that much that year. Now, uh, uh, if you see the uh, tamarind, it just like, tree looks like a very huge tree because there are many uh, audience in this group. May, they may not have seen uh, tamarind, how it looks like. That's why I put this figure. And it's a very huge tree. It can be grown as an avenue tree as well, right? If you see the, uh, diff the share of uh, different states, you will find Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Tilanga, all southern states being uh, top. And uh, we export a lot of tamarind actually in uh, different forms as a directly as a fruit, then as a pulp of uh, just a de seeded pulp we export and then uh, we export some tamarind concentrate and other products as well. Uh, if you see uh, nearly 500,000 tons of tamarind is exported from this uh, uh, country. If we are a, a largest producer of tamarind products, 0.3 million tons. Now, there are different aspects in these points. And of course, uh, nearly from Deccan Plateau, we 
we exported uh, last year about 100 million rupees of uh, uh, products to uh, us and uh, now when you talk about tamarind there are two or three things are very important first as a food, we need you know, tamarind is value for mainly for fruit pulp pulp you can see at the center there is a pulp figure of pulp then you have a seed now when you, uh, you know harvest the the fruit somewhere in from uh, january end to march this is the season when you uh, you get the tamarind uh, harvested from the tree in india maybe down south you go you harvest much earlier maybe around uh, january end for february beginning and we go slightly north it comes in march april okay if you see ripe fruit it contains about 30 to 50 percent pulp and the shell is about 11 to 30 percent and seed is 25 to 40 percent all three are valuable you know, even though we value it mainly for pulp but seed and other things also very important that you will know at the end of the presentation uh, the mainly the pulp when you talk about because it's sweet acidic taste and it's valued for its tartaric acid for souring all our uh, uh, food items we use tamarind juice after uh, no soaking in water and use that juice in especially in sambar and other preparations and if you see the chemical constituents and other things you can go through uh, this uh, presentation later and find that main important thing is a uh, total soluble soluble sol solids is 65 to 70 percent 77 percent and tss is about 18 to 48 bricks it's a wide wide variation and tartaric acid is the most important component it is 15 to uh, no 20 percent seeds when we say that it's anywhere from 25 to 40 percent depending on the variety uh, you will get the seeds it's a very very valuable byproduct probably it's better than the product many a times and that you will know at the end and uh, seeds and now you have a, when you see the seed it has a you know dark purple you know brownish color reddish color you know this color this purplish color is a seed tester or coat which is about uh, 20 to 30 percent of the seed and the kernel or endosperm is about 75 to 75 percent the different uh, you know the testa as well as the seed endosperm is used for different purposes and as a shell also is a very hard material and just like a hard wood it can be used as a special kind of a fuel uh, in case of you know uh, we you know lime uh, stones now we we bake it to make it into a powder the, for that purpose they mainly use this uh, tamarind uh, uh, fruit shell uh, yes because it gives very high calorific value around 5000 to 6000 uh, uh, kilocalories per kg right uh, uh, you know tamarind seed we can uh, you know is a yes, introduction i tell you main product from uh, tamarind seed is a tamarind kernel powder uh, kernel, kernel powder of course uh, uh, even the test also we produce jellos and other things now processing of tamarind if you just look at it from tamarind what you get main product is a pulp but uh, at, at this point of time say we say pulp we can make many things from pulp that i will show you later uh, no yeah beverages or as a uh, yes a pulp as a concentrate and a tamarind uh, pulp powder and other things many many things you can make that i'll show you later candies and other things by products we have three categories husk seed and fiber husk is goes for uh, uh, you basically as a fuel and it's a hard fuel a hard uh, like like a, like a hard wood and the seed you can make many products that i will show you later fiber of course it just goes for a, as a uh, fuel only but you can use it as a for some fiber it is not very important this is the in nutshell how it goes like from fruit now you harvest it you have a with shell the tamarind fruit you have to dehull you have a machine because these machines were uh, uh, developed the third, uh, third one figure uh, green color one my i don't know whether you see my uh, cursor and then next one is once you remove the shell uh, from the uh, from the left to right it, it goes moves on you will get that uh, fruit dehulled fruits where you have some fiber also it's manually removed even now there is no machine available de-shelling 
Uh, additionally, we have a machines, couple of machines developed from University of Agricultural Sciences, Bangalore. Then we have a de-seeder, uh, that is also very yes, more key unit operation, de-seeding, very difficult unit operation. Defibering is still done manually. Then pulp, you can make uh, many things. It's a directly sell as a pulp in different forms that I'll show you later, storage and marketing. And uh, this is how it traditionally tamarind is processed. Generally, after harvesting, you know, they uh, spread it on a, a drying yard. They uh, beat with, uh, when it is optimum dried, about 20, 18 to 22%. Moisture content, they beat it, and the shell is removed with a stick. And then this is a different fractions you can see in the uh, figures. And once you, uh, you know, remove the fiber and the shell, you can beat it with a mallet or with an iron pipe. Normally, we use the uh, irrigation, one, you know, half-inch pipes to, you know, de-seed it. On a stone, we beat it and then remove the uh, seeds. And after that, once you remove the pulp, in different forms, it is sold in the market. One, just like a chapati or you'll call dosa also. Inside, there will be a, a you know, poor quality material and the outside, the outside, the long straight open is uh, stuck on that and then make it, it is a round about 12 to 14 inch rounds. And this is one kind of a product. For that, in the leftmost one, there is a press. And this, this is pressed. Okay, on the right side, you have a cakes. This is also very popular in Andhra Pradesh and other places. Now you just, you after de-seeding, you make it like a cake. This is a traditional processing. This is the uh, value chain of uh, tamarind pro uh, no, from pod to different products. Uh, you, you harvest, cleaning, grade it, dry it, degasking or dealing it, remove husk and then uh, seeds and you will get three kinds of uh, products. Now we will go into little bit details. How to dehull the tamarind? See, I told you traditionally with beaten with sticks at the optimum moisture content and you remove the hull. It's a very brittle. Hull is very brittle, you can remove easily. But for that, we developed a, a machine Two in one uh, tamarind uh, dealer come de seeded long back, 15 20 years back. Uh, this machine is by about 600 kg per hour de uh, uh, for uh, de hulling and uh, 45 kg per hour for de seeding. Two operations can be done with the same machine, two HP motor operated. It's a very fast, but the quality of the product, what you get at the end, uh, de seeded uh, pulp, is not of commercial uh, interest. If you want to sell as a pulp, there are different grades. They call Karpuli in Karnataka or uh, in Tamil they call Otareko. Just backfold it and looks like a white color on both sides, long one. It's a flower type of thing that is not possible with, if you use this machine. And uh, this is released and we, are, we have sold some 35 to 40 machines and, uh, and earlier. Now we have uh, improved these machines as well. This is a high capacity tamarind uh, de-huller, not a de-seeder, de-huller only, one tons per hour. This is a double stage dehuller uh, because uh, the dehulling efficiency is high, 95%, and costs about 1 lakh. It's commercialized through NRDC and it's operated by 5 HP motor and 3 phase uh, current. This is developed by US Bangalore. You can operate with 3, 3 HP as, as uh, no, uh, you, with a lower HP also, but with uh, lesser capacity. Deseeding is the key operation, it's most difficult operation. We don't have, even today, a very good de-seeder we don't have. This machine was released last year. This is an automatic, you know, after de the fruits, you have to remove the uh, fiber, or without removing the fiber, also you can feed it from the top hopper, and it goes through the belt conveyor. There is a de-seeding mechanism here. 100 kg, uh, you know, fruits you can de-seed per hour. The efficiency is greater than 90%. 90%. The problem here is, you, you see the material what after the de-seeding, what you get it. See, this is uh, used, you know, the un, un, uh, no, the, the fruits de without removing the fiber was used in this case. That's why it looks clumsy. But all the fruits are not de-seeded straight. That means, for market, you have to make it straight and flat. That is not possible. Maybe 30% you can remove straight. Remaining again comes with a zigzag opening and they can be used for making for secondary product. Or as a sada, they call it. Uh, for cake and all, you can make it. Or tamarind concentrate and other things, you can use this material.
but there is no other machine available currently there are many quality standards uh, you know uh, specified for a tamarind beer of indian standards as well as akbar old standard but still it's in work uh, uh, they have a, for, a, for a, you, you have it for a tamarind cold tamarind with seed this is there are the three categories we have you can go through this slide later because a short time i'm just giving a gist of idea special standard and general variation is uh, uh, basically uh, and how much it it it, it gives a uh, no uh, uh, the crude fiber and other things no these are all uh, based on the category they have divided into three categories by akbar earlier still we don't have from fsi and for a seed extracted tamarind that is a pulp what we use at home for that there are different grades grade special grade a grade b grade c and unspecified grade see this seems it is a very hygroscopic material the moisture content varies a lot a lot maybe from 18 to 20% wide variation moisture is permitted in these grades 5 to 20% variation is allowed even with agbat standards uh, the, and i told you about the pulp and uh, the main product if you want to process uh, you can make many products out of pulp how it is processed now this is chart tamarind fruit pulp after de seeding you soak it in water or that is steeping in water or hot warm or cold water this is all standardized uh, uh, already if you want uh, uh, no information you can contact again or you can contact akrip is the r and d coordinator research project on uh, post harvest processing uh, uh, process engineering and technology from uh, us bangalore no you, this is all standardized you squeeze it with uh, pulper any pulper fruit pulper you can use it and then uh, better it to put it a fruit mill and then pulper and then filtration you will get a tamarind pulp this is a raw pulp from this many things are made now tamarind concentrate is made from pulp this is the key product in the market this can be made either from the tamarind pulp or from the juice concentrate you extract from the pulp soluble material again you the juice can be again to make it into tamarind concentrate concentrate there are two types of tamarind tamarind concentrate one is made from the pulp other one is made from the tamarind these two things are possible and uh, how the process flow chart just i have given as a, a for an idea you separate the pulp from the pulp you you, you actually adjust your uh, uh, bricks and other things solve no tss and other things and pasteurize it and vacuum evaporation you do it do it and you remove some of the moisture the tamarind vacuum after vacuum evaporation tss should be 32% acidity should be 4.5% 5% this is a tamarind concentrate from pulp from juice it is different so this is that the tamarind uh, uh, concentrate from the pulp which is uh, having moisture content 74% and uh, uh, for the, the concentrate it will become 40% 74% is the original pulp moisture content after removing the you know, vacuum concentration you will get it tss is about 55% as it is 4.2% from this pulp can be used for making candy and other items Many you can make that i'll give you an idea the, you know a pilot plant is also made uh, from uh, us bangalore where we used to use this vat open vat for pasteurization multi purpose vat this is the fruit pulper after taking the uh, you know pulp from the fruit that is again steeped and then liquid type of pulp is removed from the fruit pulper this is the double stage pulper 16 164 and 132 is the each is the screen no uh, the opening size for these uh, uh, pulpers and for that pasteurization we use some kind of a batch pad vat for concentration we use the vacuum pan evaporator and there are many products made from this pulp i already told these are the taken from internet pictures only some other things we will see uh, 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 later you can make pickle we can, we can make paste we can make jam you can make candy you can make tamarind syrup and juice concentrate pulp concentrate tamarind pulp powder all these products are possible from pulp tamarind pulp which is extracted out from out from the fruit see these are the products 
you can say these are all the commercial brand tamicon is a very popular brand in india there are other things from uh, imli also tamili is also available in uh, uh, in the market in the supermarket you can get tamlin puri as well tamlin puri is just like uh, a product which is straight away you can use it for culinary purposes for preparing sambar and other things instead of steeping a, a tamarind raw tamarind and steep it for water then squeeze it and use that juice instead of that you can use tamarind puri directly and the candy is also available in the market see you can make pickle there are many very many many uh, culinary practices in this country even the pickle uh, andhra style is different tamil nadu style is different karnataka style is different you can get many types of pickles from uh, tamarind and you 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 will get uh, this is the product which you can see the right side top corner is the one we i call it as a flower type or uh, 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 this is called karpuli in uh, karnataka this is premium product nearly 200 rupees a kg for uh, per kg when you properly make it is back folded one remove the seed back folded make it like a cake left side one is the uh, the tamarind which is not of high quality is is not opened a long like a fr- fruit like a flower that is actually you no know, they made into a cake after pressing it looks like a black color it is a little bit old now tamarind pulp if you allow it for 3 months it will become darker in color because of maillard re- uh, non enzymatic maillard reaction this is very common even pectiolytic enzymes act on it and it become like a juicy type it will uh, give more water that's why it's you know it's 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 made into a, like a cake by pressing so air is not allowed so that uh, that is the way we store the pulp here uh, there are uh, tamarind you know chutney is all made from pulp see you can see some of the tamarind uh, juices also these are ready to drink juices beverages are available and left you know right uh, the, the bottom corner you have a tamarind pulp powder i'll show you the one slide also about powder see basically some of the, your uh, 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 you know uh, ready to eat or ready to cook product what you get from mtr and other people you have a tamarind added to that product uh, it, it, it can be in a blue or a mix or something like that where tamarind powder pulp powder is required for that the process is different you take the pulp dry it and then mill it and uh, along with some kind of a starch powder it nearly 20 to 40 percent is the starch in that powder that looks like a you know golden color this is actually used in that pulyora mix and other other, other uh, uh, things right these uh, in these beverages there are uh, certain uh, companies they have their own formula to make their tamarind juices from different countries right and uh, india as a as a custom when we have uh, this uh, marriage function fixed we call uh, uh, the first juice given is a tamarind uh, panaka they call it just with uh, jaggery they give tamarind juice mixed with uh, jaggery that is called tamarind panaka there is a first sweet item they give when the girl, no groom and uh, girl it is fixed their marriage is fixed that, that is also a kind of a juice of course process juice you have come now tamarind concentrate is a new product maybe about 10 years this product is coming into the market indira foods and tamily all these people are selling this juice concentrate this is actually is a higher you no know, is a product which is more valuable than the normal pulp concentrate there is a bureau of indian standard i uh, uh, code 5955 1993 you have to meet these requirements tamarind juice concentrate so you it should have a tartaric acid 9% and total soluble solid solids by mass 65% for this there are other things as well this is the juice concentrate right corner i have given you the actual commercial product available in the market today uh, in india this is a, is a very good product and it's slowly picking up in the market and this is the tamarind pulp powder i was talking about uh, this pulp powder this is mainly used for uh, making ready to eat products this is one of the ingredient uh, this uh, pulp 
tamarind pulp powder tamarind pulp powder what is the con its its constituents everything is given here and uh, starch is one of the most important ingredient here 20 to 40 percent depending upon the company right it's a uh, uh, this is a uh, next this is about tamarind pulp i will throw more light on seeds because many people are not aware what the seed is used this is a very hard seed from tamarind this looks like on the left hand side this looks like this because there is a top tester or seed coat which is again 20 to 25 percent is a seed coat this is contains lot of fiber and tanning that goes for a separate industry this is very tightly attached to the seed endosperm this is white in color white or amber in color for that we actually we have a process of roasting tan roasting for when you do it that seed testa will come out and the testa that itself is a very lot of uh, industrial value right that we will see later and the inside kernel what you got endosperm that is light amber in color is called that endosperm is actually powdered that is a major product called tamarind kernel powder major industrial product from tamarind is tkp tamarind kernel powder that this is this is the process how the seeds are processed washed dried heat treatment given mechanic mechanical scoring because you have to remove the testa that the separate of the kernel kernel again it goes for a size reduction in the hammer mill again roller mill for fine powder sieving that tamarind kernel kernel powder that is the one of the main industrial product that i'll tell more about that later in fact and uh, go goes for that industry now these are the main industrial uses of seeds tamarind kernel powder tkp normally they call it a tkp very bad industrial product more than the pulp i value this product tamarind seed testa this is a used as a vegetable tannin in leather industry and textile industry and it goes as a, a dye in the dyeing industry as well for dyeing especially especially uh, uh, pashmi, uh, pashmina salt they used to dye with this uh, this uh, wools and then uh, tamarind seed kernel powder from that they, they make a kind of a jelly called jellos that is again used in the confectionery industry and tamarind kernel powder is also used in uh, mainly in pharmaceutical and uh, cosmetic industries as well that because tamarind seed pectin is used in tar cosmetic industry in some lipsticks and other uh, uh, cosmetic products pharmaceutical industry they use it you uh, know this is mainly used it in some kind of a expectorant mainly seed oil that i'll show you later uh, and the plastic industry as well this is the tamarind kernel powder once you remove the testa that purplish color testa the kernel looks like this leftmost uh, uh, bowl and the powder it is a white color powder where if it is a white it has a more commercial value the tkp industry mainly uses as a in the textile industry as a sizing agent sizing agent is see sometimes we make it as a starch that the starch is applied on the threads you know the textile threads so that it can if we can use in a, in a hand loom or in a, uh, a power loom you cannot you know you have to use a side uh, thread for that we need to come a starchy material this dip in starch dry it what happens when you uh, tamarind kernel powder with water when you make it just like a boil it it will you know come like a ganji it's a glue type of material in that the threads are passed and it in the sticks on that thread so it gives a kind of a coating kind of a coating that allows the weaving easy that's that is the process called sizing uh, in the textile industry and uh, this is tamarind kernel powder is valued for that major industrial raw material right and you can use tkp for many other purposes as well you can use it as a paper adhesive for uh, you know many of your camlin glues and all made from tamarind kernel powder and in case of a viscose rayon uh, you know this material starch is not that good whereas tkp glue the sizing agent is much better so they will uh, in the viscose industry it's also they take this uh, uh, rayon factories they take tkp and uh, certain kind of uh, you know in uh, in explosives in the gum powder also tkp is used 
many people will be very surprised tamarind is going to the gun pouch now uh, this is possible jello is a is a, is a edible product and uh, this product is goes uh, with confectioner how to make jellos if possible i'll tell you at the end this terminal kernel powder this process is patented by indian government of india patent number 3223 you can contact that uh, 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 organization uh, you, you can get uh, all kinds of information of course food products also made from tamarind kernel powder it goes to the you no know, in a fortified bread biscuit jelly also not much quantity is being used at, at this point of time um, yes except for jellos that gel is camel commercially some companies are making even cakes and chapatis also some universities have made and this is the taste of from the seed you can see the color purplish color dark brownish color after powdering it you get like this this is going for uh, uh, no for dyeing industry for especially for wool dyeing and of course it goes as a tannin vegetable tannin is the one of the most important product going for leather processing tanning of leather uh, because the pollution control board they are very strict with uh, chemical most of the leather, leather almost equal if you are processing 1 kg of uh, leather maybe 3 or 4 kg of chemicals are used they are trying to eliminate those chemicals and they are trying to use vegetable source tanning this is the tamarind tea tester is the most important product which in by products going for that industry nearly 60000 tons of this is going for the industry another important product from seed kernel kernel that is oil see tamarind seed kernel contains about 6 to 7% of oil depending on the variety even slightly more oil also it is you see the very nice golden color it doesn't have any smell it's very good in mingles with many pharmaceutical items and cosmetic items it has a more uh, unsaturated fatty acid some composition i have given here the top 3 are uh, uh, saturated fat next one is unsaturated fat 36 to 49% palmitic ceric and folic acids are uh, saturated but generally it goes with uh, more of uh, unsaturated fat you can use it for edible purpose but it is more valuable so it goes for mainly for cosmetic purposes this is also possible a product and tamarind seed gel i told you about jellos Uh, this is a kind of a polysaccharide tamarind contains a, you know substitute for a vegetable based pectin we need pectin for making a, your jam any fruit jam you need pectin has to be added which is imported right now from a, a different countries to india nearly 200 tons pectin we import instead of that tamarind jelly uh, that is a, uh, from seed kernel powder we can make jellos the process is given here because i don't have much time to tell you about that uh, that jelly the jellos is made that again is goes for as a fruit jelly directly edible jelly or as a uh, as a product for uh, making uh, some cosmetic items uh, in conclusion i i i conclude like this tamarind an important forest produce and its processing offers a great scope variety of products both food and industrial are already existing in the market though not immediately visible for a commoner except for the pulp which we normally use as a culinary purposes many value added food products could be made locally from tamarind pulp as well as seed kernel and the primary processing of tamarind fruit is still as a challenge not many good commercial machinery are available yet uh, with this i in, 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 conclude my talk I think I have taken I think thirty around thirty minutes. If you have any questions, put it. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir.